What's poppin' peeps? It's your boy Amphrikanta Moon's Tarot. I'm coming at you guys with the daily readings, or more so the weekend reading. The first one I see is the first one I read. Let's get it. Poppin' baby and see what we got going on for all 12 of my motherfucking zodiac signs in love. Hopefully you guys are doing fantastic. If so, let me know down in the comments down below. Links in the description box down below for my Instagram, my Twitter, and my TikTok. If you guys want to drop a follow, I would gratefully appreciate that. Shout out to my notification gang. I love to see my notification gang pull on through. As always, the first time I see is the first time I read, and the first time I saw was Cancer. So we're going to go ahead and get it popping. Shout out to Team Cancer. As always, everybody, before we do get started, I do like to note if you're interested in a personal read, check out my website, cancermoonstarot.com. It's going to be linked down in my description box below. If you would like to book a reading with me feel free to okay all right guys i'm gonna say what's up here to some peeps and then we'll get started uh tasha what's going on what's going on julie what's up icy purple what's going on mahogany uh what's going on in bali what's going on zephra hey what's up bu nicole mj sue josh how's everybody doing man what's going on sunshine goddess how is everyone doing glenn what is up what is up be a bay it's good friday y'all hello hello how you doing Hope you're doing great. All right, though, guys, we're going to get on into it. Like I mentioned, uh, Team Cancer's up first tier for today, so we'll be checking into the next 72. MJ said, hey, Ann, I can finally listen to today's lives. Every time I've joined, I've had to jump off. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Happy you can chillax, though, and watch and enjoy yourself. Uh, what's going on, Naha or Naja? How is it? Hopefully you're doing good. Happy Good Friday to you, too. Thank you guys so, so much. What's up, Liz? Good day from Australia. Welcome, welcome in. All right, everybody. Team Cancer is up first, so let's go ahead here and get it popping, okay? Let's see what we got going on. What information and insight do we got coming on in here for Cancer? You ran here, Carla? <laughs> Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in the next 72 hours. What information and insight do we got popping on in here for Cancer? Moving on into the next 72 hours. Hopefully, we're going to be looking at some awesome sauce. Hope your day is going well. Thank you, Glenn. Really appreciate it. I'm not going to lie, guys. Today's been a little bit uh, <laughs> rough around the edges for me. So it's been a day. Not going to get deep into the details, but... Uh, Mercury retrograded all over me. Put it that way. <laughs> Anyhow, though, man, what's showing up here for Cancer? Moving on into the weekend. Let's go ahead and check it out. Starting out here with the overall energy for Cancer. What do we got? And we have here a Two of Swords in reverse. You could be connecting here possibly with an air sign like a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Coming into the current energy, we have here the Ace of Swords in reverse. What it is you're dealing with. We got the Ace of Wands in reverse. And then looking at the outcome here for Cancer is going to be the Ten of Wands in in the upright position. So as far as what I'm picking up on here for Cancer, two of swords in the reverse position paired to the ace of swords reverse coming into your weekend. Uh, it kind of feels to me like you guys are at a point where you're choosing to make some sort of final decision. I feel to either no longer communicate to a specific person or you're making a final decision to maybe no longer take a certain kind of action is what it's feeling like to be cancer. But this is a very interesting reading because I think on one hand, right, Ace of Swords and Upright represents truth, but Ace of Swords reversed tends to represent possibly being into a, uh, possibly being in a space where you're not seeing the truth of a situation. So cancers, I think for some of you guys, I think you know the truth about something, but it's like you just don't want to see the truth. I'm not trying to say that you're living in a, delu in a delusion, but it's like you don't want to open up or admit that something is the way it is. And I feel like that really hurts. You know, looking at what you're dealing with here, Ace of Wands reversed, it's like you wish you can make a situation positive. You wish you could make a situation exactly what you desire it to be. But the reality of what it is is inherently different. And with the outcome showing up here being the Ten of Wands, Ten of Wands here says, it hurts, man. You know, you're carrying a lot of burdens here, hoping that something could be completely different than what it actually is. So I don't even think it's about necessarily not wanting to talk or to communicate to specific people, but it definitely feels like a specific situation turned into something that you didn't expect it to. And you want to see it in the image that you desire to see it, but it's pretty hard to escape the reality of what it is. And having to kind of deal with that battle of, well, do I keep on kind of perceiving something as what I want it to be, or do I really embrace the truth of what the situations become? Maybe somebody's not who you thought they were, but having to see them from the realistic point of view could be really hard. Maybe a situation like a job or something wasn't what you thought it was. Maybe a friend wasn't who they said they were. So these are the types of situations that are very difficult to deal with. But at the end of the day though, here Team Cancer, despite What's happening, I feel like it's pretty hard, once again, Ace of Swords reverse to kind of avoid the truth or to avoid what's actually going on. So ultimately here, Ten of Wands in the upright position says, it sucks, but I have to look at something or someone 
exactly for what it is and not for what I want it to be or what I want them to be. Okay. So this is about embracing truth coming into this weekend. And it's one of those situations where it's like, it hurts. It's definitely bittersweet, but it's better to embrace the truth than to be in a period of time to where I'm pushing myself away from what the truth actually is. Because the longer you delay embracing the truth in the end, the more it's going to hurt. Okay, guys? So definitely a very intense start <laughs> to our weekend reading. It's not going to apply to every cancer out there, but if it is your story, I know it can suck sometimes to see something for what it is, especially when you want it to be something different so, so bad, but you're helping yourself in the long run and you're saving yourself a lot of pain by embracing the truth of a situation for what it truly is and allowing yourself to process that now rather than later. Okay, cancer? I love you guys. Let's keep it popping, pushing and moving forward. Take it if it resonates. Leave it if it doesn't, but thank you for tuning in here anyhow. Okay? Okay. All right, baby. Let's keep it popping, pushing and moving forward. Cancers, wishing you guys a good weekend nonetheless. So we have started out here today with our water signs. For the lineup, we're going to do water, air, fire and earth. So getting into our air signs, let's check out here Team Aquarius and see what we got going on here for you. Okay. What information and insight do we got rolling on in here for Team Aqua, baby? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Moving into the next 72 hours. What information and insight do we got showing up here for Aquarius? Moving into the next 72 hours. Aqua, we're going to get ourselves about this last and final shuffle. And we'll see what we got going on with you, babe. Hopefully, we're looking at some awesome stuff. Team Aquarius overall energy for you is going to be the temperance card. You could be connecting here with the Sagittarius for a few of you. Coming into your current energy, we got here an Ace of Swords reversed, looking at what you're dealing with, a Ten of Wands coming out, looking at the outcome for you, a Three of Cups in the reverse position here, Team Aqua. So let's see what is happening here for you. You could be dealing with a Sag, as I previously stated with a temperance, but temperance card here all the way to the Ace of Swords reversed. I think right now you're starting to notice here, guys, it feels a heck of a lot better not communicating towards a specific person. I think on an emotional level, you feel better because I feel like the person that you were probably communicating to or talking to, when you would talk to them, more than likely you'd feel drained, more than likely you wouldn't feel like super high vibrational. So I'm getting the feeling here where you're starting to test the waters Aquarius this weekend. And it's like, you know what? The more that I'm not really hanging around this person, the more I'm not really talking to them, the better my spirits have been right temperance card the more balanced i felt the more emotionally connected i felt in a good way you know looking at what you're dealing with here being the ten of wands i think that it's been kind of hard to be around somebody and i'm not sure who this person is it could be a family member a friend maybe some kind of co-worker at work maybe this is a person in your life who's just suddenly kind of gone through a lot lately and maybe they've been in a very hard place and it's kind of been hard to be around them because their energy may be something that you're absorbing like a sponge so i feel like ultimately right now this week and you're pretty much saying I'm noticing the more that I'm taking a step back from someone the better I'm actually feeling you know having a look here at the outcome three of cups reversed I feel like you're not happy though about having to take a step back from them because I do feel like this is somebody you care about, but ultimately you're like, I need to care about myself too, right? So Aquarius, it's a little bit of a sticky situation is what it feels like, especially for example, let's say that this is a family member. You love the person, they're your family, but maybe they've been going through something like a family member's going through some kind of divorce. And as much as that sucks, maybe they're always in a low vibrational state of being. And then every time you're around them, you're picking up on that energy and it's like, I love them, but it's hard to be around them. That's the kind of vibe and energy I'm picking up on. So it's like, despite the fact of you caring for the person, I think at least this weekend, a break is much needed. Okay. So Aquarians take that break. If you need it at the end of the day, you could still love somebody, but sometimes know that, Hey, maybe they're a little bit too draining and you need a break. So you can take breaks from the people you love. Hopefully whoever you're dealing with definitely gets to a better space. But at this time, it's a little much for you. So if you need some time for yourself, don't hesitate to take it, okay? Let's keep it popping, pushing, and moving forward. Aquarius, take it if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't, but thank you for tuning in here nonetheless, okay? All right, everybody. We have started out, like I mentioned previously, with the water. We have done the air, so we're going to be getting into our fire signs here next. Real quick, though, guys, let me just grab a water real fast because I'm almost out of my drink that I have right now. I need something for the daily, so let me just get a water real quickly, and then I'm going to come on back, and then we're going to knock out the rest of the signs. So thank you, guys, and thank you for your patience. I will be right back.
Sorry about that, y'all. Thank you for your patience, though. Really, really appreciate it. And let's go ahead and keep it moving forward. So we just finished up our Aquarius. Let's hop on into our fire and jumping into the fire signs. Let's check out the Ram fam and see what we got going on. What do we got showing up here for Aries, baby? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Moving along here into the next 72 hours. What information and insight do we got rolling on in here for Aries? Coming on into the weekend, baby. Hopefully, we're looking at some awesome sauce. Let's go ahead here and take a look, okay? Aquarius, overall energy for you, is going to go ahead and be the Ace of Swords in reverse. <laughs> Freaking third sign in a row we're getting this card. Taking a look here at the current energy, Lovers in reverse. What it is you're dealing with, we got here the Knight of Cups. And then looking at the outcome for you, Aries is going to be the Queen of Cups in the upright position. So, let's go ahead over here and begin. First and foremost, Aries. Hmm. Ace of Swords reversed here. Lovers in reverse here. I definitely feel a big disconnection coming into the weekend, but I feel like you have a massive interest in something else. Now, I do want to say this can be having a massive interest in someone else. So for some areas, you might be noticing you're disconnected from a specific person, but you've taken interest in someone else. If that's the case, that could be happening here for some of you. But I think ultimately a lot of you guys are starting to just note how detached you are from something or someone specific. And I feel like you're ready for something new, but it's not even about being ready for something new. I feel like already you've grown closer to someone or something new in your life. So you're kind of in the transitionary period because you've been detaching from something for a while, but you're also beginning to note like, yeah, I'm already moving forward in a different direction, either with someone else or something else. And I feel like that's starting to finally become very apparent for you coming into your weekend. You know, looking at the outcome here, Queen of Cups, emotionally, you're very much so aligned to whatever this new thing is or new person is moving into your weekend so guys I feel like this is an energy of like out with the old and in with the new but you're starting to see you're kind of already in with the new you know so if it's a new person you pretty much already feel connected to them you've been growing closer to them moving more towards them for a while now if it is a new situation you've been already pretty much invested in that situation for quite some time is what it feels like to me so I think what's happening for you is that there's a confirmation that's showing up here this weekend where it's like you know what I 100% am detached from my previous environment and this thing that I've been taking some time investing into is what I really do want to commit to moving forward to the foreseeable future. You know, maybe you've been dealing with a connection for a while between you and somebody and that connection lost its spark and maybe you've been seeing you've been growing closer to another person. So with that being said, maybe that's confirmation of like, okay, time to end this connection and give an investment into this one for real this time. So I really do feel out with the old and in with the new, but at the same time, it's like you've kind of been been already establishing something new is what it feels like, but you're getting the confirmation here that it's totally okay to let go of what's no longer serving you this weekend and to fully invest now into what is, okay? So I definitely feel that for you guys. Take it, of course, if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't, but Aries, I think you're ready here to fully embrace this new situation. So out with the old and in with the new. Let's keep it popping, pushing and moving forward, baby, okay? All right, Team Aries. So guys, we have done our fire, we have done our water and our air. Let's get into the earth signs, jumping into the earth, team Capricorn, let's see what we got going on here for you, baby. Messages and insights showing up here for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Moving on into the next 72 hours, what do we got showing up here for team Cappy? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus coming on into the weekend. Hopefully, we're looking at some awesome sauce. What up, Fawn? How you doing? Hey, Teeny. Hey, Jessica. How's everybody doing today? Hope you guys are doing well. Capricorn, we're going to get about one more shuffle, and we'll see what's up. Cappy, overall energy for you is the Ten of Swords. You could be connecting here potentially with an air sign like a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Coming into the current energy, we got here the Fool in Reverse, what you're dealing with. We have here the Ace of Wands in the Upright. And then looking at the outcome, Capricorn, a Knight of Cups showing up in the Upright position too. Jumping into your weekend, I definitely don't feel like you have... Any sort of desire or will to want to kind of continue something, this looks to me like you want to end something officially and you're not interested in having any sort of fresh start. So it could be about ending some kind of relationship, whether it's platonic or whether it's romantic, but it also could be about ending any kind of cycle that you don't wish to continue to participate in. So Capricorns, you're taking back your participation. There's something you no longer want to participate in, whether it be a relationship of a sort or whether it happened to be anything else like career, habits, etc. So I definitely 
definitely see that many of you here are getting ready to finish or stop something that you've invested in for some time. But looking at what you're dealing with here being the Ace of Wands, something else is catching your eye. So if you're no longer wanting to participate in a certain workplace, maybe a new job is catching your eye that you want to start moving towards. Maybe new kinds of friends are catching your eye, new kinds of lovers or new kinds of habits. But I definitely think that something exciting is showing up here for you. And it's like, yeah, this exciting thing is what I much rather be doing than what I currently was invested in. So in a way, actually, this is kind of similar to the Aries reading that I just did. Um, I did read for Aries previously before you guys, and I was saying in their reading, they're kind of like out with the old and in with the new, and to a kind of certain degree, in a way, Capricorn, so are you guys. I almost feel like for your weekend, you're getting confirmation that you don't want to restart something. You don't want a fresh start in something. You want a fresh start for yourself. So if this is a breakup, I don't want a fresh start in that relationship. I want a new boo. If this is you walking or quitting a job, I don't want a new start in that job. I want a new job instead. So I definitely feel feel like many of you guys are ready to close out a cycle. You're not interested in starting fresh there. You're interested in starting fresh completely is what it looks like. Okay. Looking at the outcome here, Knight of Cups, you just have better energy and a better feeling going into something brand new and starting from the ground up than trying to rebuild a situation. I also feel like you've probably tried to take the route of rebuilding something before. So if it was a relationship, you've probably tried to rebuild that relationship a couple of times before you said, we just need to tear it down and let the tower fall. You know, moving into the weekend, you're letting the tower fall. But I think you've tried to rebuild before. And you're like, I can't do rebuilding anymore. I need to start from scratch. I need to build from the ground up. So you're ready for a change in life, guys. A new chapter is starting in your life, Capricorn. And it doesn't just have to be about love or work or anything like that. It could be about literally anything. So if it applies in one way or form in your life, it's your story. But you're ready here to build from the ground up. And I'd say, you know what? Maybe that's not such a bad thing. It could be really, really great having a complete fresh start. Instead of having to rebuild something, you have the power, you have the planning, you have everything you need kind of in your pocket to you know, make something beautiful from the beginning, right? So that's the exciting part about it. So Capricorns, do take this if it resonates, right? If not, no worries, but let's keep it popping, pushing, and moving forward. So we have touched base here with our first batch of Zodiac signs, guys, for the weekend read. We're going to hop into our second batch here shortly, and then we'll get back to it. Uh, Tasha said, Capricorn, let the dead flower go and seek the garden. I like that. Yeah, pretty much, right, is the statement right there. Uh, Glenn said, I'm trying to do more healthy habits and stop habits that harm me. Very good. And honestly, it's a great thing to acknowledge the habits that harm you in the first place you know most people can acknowledge them but not want to do anything about it not only acknowledging your bad habits is a good thing but like desiring to change the harmful habits is a really good thing too so glad to see that for you man really cool uh what's going on brandy how are you thank you for stopping by fawn said you're making barbecue ribs collard greens and mac and cheese god damn it sounds like an awesome feast tonight over at fawn's house shit i will definitely take some mac and cheese and barbecue ribs i don't know about the collard greens but i'll take the the, I'm the mac and cheese and the ribs for sure though shit i haven't had ribs in a long time dude I have not had them in a very long time. So damn, that would hit the spot right now, low key fun. <laughs> that would hit the spot, man. What's up, V? Taurus Gang's here. Hey yo, what's up, what's up? How you doing? Appreciate you stopping by, V. By the way, for the 70 peeps in the chat, if you guys are having fun, hit that like button. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Brooklyn said self awareness is key 100 percent Self awareness is always key for sure. It's a southern thing. I know. I know. I love eating food down south, man. Let me tell you. Every time that I go in like North Carolina, South Carolina, oh my fucking God, the food is immaculate. Even in Florida sometimes. And I mean like Florida technically is like south, but like it's not like in terms of like the East Coast, I don't really consider Florida to be like the South. I would consider more like Georgia to be the South, like North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, kind of, because Virginia can still be pretty Northy in their culture. But yeah, at the end of the day, though, it hits the fucking spot when you go down South, especially at like a Denny's down South, dude. It's so fucking good. Anyhow, anyhow, I'm off topic. <laughs> you got leftover ribs. You almost forgot. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, it does sound delicious for sure. I had pizza today because it's Pizza Friday, so that was good. Why are us Libras or why are Libras suffering so much right now? I mean, at the end of the day, depending upon whether it's a Libra thing or it's something specific to your chart, we just have a lot happening astrologically at this time. So a lot of people are going through it, you know? 
a lot of people are going through it. Sorry to hear though, if you're in that energy of suffering, you know, like I, I mentioned earlier today, today was not my day. <laughs> so I've had a rough around the edges kind of day. But um, with that being said, guys, when you're in those spaces where it's just not feeling great and when times are, aren't good, you got to remember that we live in a reality of duality. So there is no dark without light. There is no light without dark. So when we're in the hard times, we're a lot closer to the good times than you can imagine. So when you're going through shit, just remember the good times for you aren't that far away. Keep that in mind, okay? Waffle House, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Love Waffle House, dude. Debbie said Tennessee too. I feel like I always forget about Tennessee, man. That's cool though, Tennessee. Yeah. Taxes down south as well, Arkansas, so many different places. I've been down like I've I've been through like the whole East Coast, but I've never really gone more of like Midwest or I've never been to the West in general. I would like to go to West Side though. I definitely would. Thank you, mods. Appreciate that. Ooh, some fucking cornbread sounds good right now, dude. That sounds like a good time. Cornbread with like any kind of meal that you eat, dude, is just chef's fucking kiss. Chef's kiss, man. Yeah, Fawn said we had that lunar eclipse in Libra and the solar eclipse is supposed to be in our opposite sign, Aries. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that lunar eclipse in Libra, man, had a delay for me. <laughs> it had a fucking delay for me, dude. It was all chill until like two days ago, and I was like, fuck, now it's starting to hit. But anyhow, though, guys, let's get back to it. Uh, we're jumping into water. I did cancer already. So let's have a look here at Scorpio and see what we got going on. Message is coming on in here for Scorpio, baby. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus moving into the next 72 hours. What information and insight? Do we got rolling on in here for our Zodiac to Scorpio coming on into the weekend? I hope you guys are looking at some pretty fantastic stuff. Let's go ahead and have ourselves a look. Scorpio, overall energy for you is a four of wands in reverse. Taking a look here at the current energy we have here, the wheel of fortune, what you're dealing with, guys. We have here the seven of wands. And then looking at the outcome for you, we have here the ace of cups in the upright position as well. I feel like for Scorpios, you're kind of at a point where you're over how, that's a really weird term, but discombobulated came up. But like what I'm really trying to say is, is like how disorganized something is. There's a lack of stability, I feel, Scorpio, in a situation in your life right now. And I don't know if it's like relationship-wise, work-wise, maybe you feel like your personal path is kind of like out of whack. Like there's just a lack of stability right now. I feel like you're dealing with like consistent change or inconsistency so frequently and that right now you don't feel as good for you so like Scorpios you're trying to move away from inconsistency and you're trying to tap into more of a consistent schedule or more of a consistent kind of situation but I feel like looking at what you're dealing with here seven of wands showing up it's like no matter how much I keep trying to introduce consistency it feels like my efforts are always blocked and there is still this rapid sense of inconsistency happening looking at the outcome here ace of cups it's like I'm fulfilled in many ways in my life, but there's just that one specific situation that I would like to see stability and security in. So I feel like you're dealing with resistance. Maybe some of you guys are dealing with inconsistency in the way a specific person is treating you and that's causing frustration. Maybe some of you are finding inconsistency in finances or you're finding inconsistency in what you want to do with your life, etc. There's many different ways to go about this. So however it applies, cool. But you're finding that resistance. It's like, why is everything else else in life, excuse me, going good? But this one thing I feel like I struggle with so much. And what I learned is, is that in life, whenever we are constantly trying to face resistance, what ends up happening is, is the more we go ahead into resistance, the more the resistance pursues, right? Whatever it is we resist persists. Sometimes the best thing to do, guys, about our situation is let it go and go with the flow. So if you feel like you're dealing with inconsistency in love, rather than trying to find the perfect consistent person, go with the flow and inevitably that perfect person will come in. Because when you're constantly on the scan for somebody who's going to be the absolute most consistent and amazing individual, what ends up usually happening is, is you push everybody away if they don't check certain types of boxes. So allow yourself to let go of what it is that you seek and allow what it is that you seek to come towards you. I feel like that's the best advice I can give anybody because when you're going with the flow, inevitably, you're going to flow right to it. But when you're constantly seeking 
you're going to end up creating more resistance for yourself. So for any Scorpios who are watching, like I mentioned, Ace of Cups here for the outcome. Everything right now, like there's a lot of good shit I got going on in my life. I have a lot of fulfillment. I have a lot of happiness. It's like it's just this one specific thing that I feel isn't going so well. And it's frustrating. So with that being said, give yourself some time to continue to go with the flow. I think that the more you keep trying to find consistency, the more it's going to drain you and burn you out. Let whatever you're looking for find you. OK, try to take it day by day instead of going against the tide ride the wave. All right, guys, let's keep it popping, pushing and moving forward. Thank you, Scorpio, for watching. If it resonates, cool. If not, no worries. So guys, we have touched base here with our water. Let's get back on into, if I'm not mistaken, is it our earth signs? It's our air signs. So we did water. Let's hop into air, jump it into our air signs. Team Gemini, what do we got going on here for you? Message is showing up here for the Gemini, baby. Sun, moon, rising and Venus. Moving into the next 72 hours. What do we got going on here for Team Gemini, please? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus coming on into the weekend. Hey, Pisces love. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for stopping by. Really appreciate you. Message is showing up here for Gemini. Moving on into the weekend. Let's see what's up here, baby. Gemini. Overall energy for you is going to be the Five of Pentacles. You could be connecting here. Oh, sorry, by the way, guys. I just noticed that it overlapped. Uh, Gemini, overall energy for you, Five of Pentacles. You could be connecting here possibly with an Earth sign for a few of you. Looking at the current energy, we got here the Seven of Cups. What you're dealing with, everybody, we have here a Nine of Wands. And looking at the outcome for the gems is going to be the Hermit in the upright position. So let's see what's in store here for you. Now, Gemini, you begin here with the Five of Pentacles, and then you pair that Five of Pentacles here to the Seven of Cups. So I feel like right now you're trying to limit your options and most of the time people would say you want as many options as possible right but no gemini you're saying i want to limit my options okay i can't be in a space of confusion forever in what direction to go or what to pick so i feel like you're trying to narrow something down maybe you have a lot of different options in your career and you want to like narrow down between like two so that you can pick something rather than be stuck because i almost feel like you're kind of overwhelmed by options you know you could be overwhelmed by options in love you could be overwhelmed by options in career or overwhelmed about what excuse me, you want to do with your life, etc. So I feel like this weekend, it's like, I'm trying to like narrow things down to like one or two choices so I can figure out what the heck I'm doing, where the hell I'm going and what's happening. You know, looking at what you're dealing with here, nine of wands, nine of wands here says though, I just feel stumped. You know, at the end of the day, as much as I'm trying to narrow down my options, I still feel pretty damn hesitant on what's the right one to pick. Now, I can't tell you guys how many times I've been in a situation like this in my life because it's happened to me so damn often and it sucks. I hate being overwhelmed and not really knowing what's right or what to pick. But often what ends up happening is, is when you're overwhelmed Everything that's intuitive to you, what actually feels good and feels right, usually gets thrown out of the window because the moment you're overwhelmed, nothing feels right. <laughs> so the best thing you can do is take a moment to breathe coming into your weekend. I promise you what's right for you will make itself known, but if you're in a state of being overwhelmed, everything's going to feel messy, discombobulated, all over the place. So the best thing you can do is first get yourself into a calm state of being. When you reach that calm state of being, what feels right will come to the surface. What intuitively feels correct for you will begin to come to the surface. When you're overwhelmed, it's like scatterbrain, right? It's super hard to think clearly, to feel clearly, but when you allow yourself to embrace the inner calm, the answers you seek are going to start coming through. So looking at the outcome, funnily enough, here comes the hermit. The hermit is about tapping into your inner wisdom and how we can achieve inner wisdom is through certain types of techniques like meditation, right? And meditation is based upon really starting to bring into your inner calm. So I feel like Gemini's you're being called this weekend to really tap into your inner calm, eliminate the chatter in your mind, eliminate the overwhelmed energies you've been experiencing and get into a space of meditation or space where you are at peace and at ease. And if you can achieve this, it's going to help you figure out what feels right and what the next step should be that you should take in whatever area of life you're confused in. Okay. Some of you right now might be like, 
I don't know, man. I got tons of options for careers. I just don't know what the hell I want to do. Or I have tons of options in love. I don't know if I want Jacob or Casey or Brandon. I don't fucking know who I want. Take a moment to breathe. Get to a space of peace. And the answer will become incredibly clear when you allow those overwhelming energies to be dissipated, okay? So take time to really connect with your inner peace this weekend. And you're going to figure out those answers, all right? I know that right now it might seem like bullshit what I'm saying, but seriously, just give it a try. Entertain me, will ya? Give it a try. And I think you're going to start to see what speaks out to you the most. Okay. All right. My beautiful gems. I love you. Take it. Of course, if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't, but have a wonderful weekend. Nonetheless. Okay. Let's keep it popping, pushing and moving forward. So we have done our lovely and amazing air and we've already touched base here with our water so let's get back into our fire jumping into the fire signs team leo let's see what we got going on for the line gang baby hopefully some awesome stuff what's showing up here for leo sun moon rising and venus moving on into the next 72 hours what information and insight do we got rolling on in here for our beautiful lion gang what's up very happy mondays how you doing today you said hey aunt to be honest narcissistic people and predators target folks who perceive to be vulnerable going with the flow is awesome advice yeah i think it's awesome advice too honestly at the end of the day man when we overcomplicate things or when we try so hard to make things happen it puts us into a state of resistance and as always what it is you resist will persist so when you allow yourself to just go with the flow kind of let things work out for you the way they need to they always work out the best don't they right that happens to me every time like every time like i kind of just leave a situation up to god or the universe however you want to call it and i'm like okay like whatever's meant to happen will happen whatever's meant to be will be every time it works out perfect to the fucking t like i swear so with that being said that's why i tell people to go with the flow because sometimes it's not worth trying to control every aspect of how something's gonna go sometimes it's great to just let that shit play out and it'll turn into exactly what it needs to be period you know very happy Mondays, or not very happy Mondays, Zephyr, what's up? You said you're watching with your mama right now. That's what's up. What's up, Mama Z? How you doing? <laughs> Appreciate you watching. You got an awesome daughter. Very cool. All right, guys. We're going to get, though, two more shuffles. I know the Leos are like, Aunt, where the hell's the reading? We're going to get two more shuffles, and uh, we'll see what's going on here with you, okay? Hopefully, we're looking at some wonderful things. But let's go ahead here, Team Leo, and check it out. Overall energy for you is going to be a Page of Cups in reverse. Looking at the current energy we got here, the Six of Swords in the upright, what you're dealing with, Leo, Judgment in the upright, and then the outcome coming into the weekend is going to be the Six of Cups in the upright position, too. So as far as what I'm picking up on here for Leos, Page of Cups reversed here, Page of, or sorry, Page of Cups... Uh, page of cups in reverse <laughs> and the six of swords in the upright i feel like this weekend you're kind of in a position right now where you're moving forward but you're not happy about it so it's like all right i'm moving on but i'm not happy that i have to do this you know looking at what you're dealing with here being the judgment i feel like you want to give someone or something a second chance but you know that you shouldn't. It's a head over heart decision happening right before your very eyes, Leo, because you know that in your heart, you want to be so forgiving towards somebody. You want to give them a second chance. You don't want to just move away and be detached from somebody or from a situation. But at the same time, in your mind, it's like, I got to stand my ground. It's like, I'm hearing that you don't want to be a pushover or you don't want to be in a space where you let somebody take advantage. It's like, I need to do this for me. Like, no matter what my heart says, logically, it's not probably a good idea to give somebody a second chance or to give a second or to give a situation a second chance. And by the way, it might not even be a second chance. It might be like a third chance, a fourth chance happening here. Uh, so you're saying to yourself, Leo's, I need to do what's right for me and I need to do right by me. And even if my heart is telling me to be forgiving and to be loving, I got to make sure that what I do is going to be the best for me, period. So looking at the outcome here, Six of Cups, it's like looking through all the history you've had with this person or with this situation, every time you look back at the history, it's always ended or resulted either in you getting hurt or this person doing something that isn't so wonderful. So you recognize, like Tasha said, right? You deserve more. You recognize you deserve more and you're not going to keep on getting what you deserve if you keep on inviting somebody back who's been giving you less than what you deserve. OK, or inviting a situation back into your life that's been prescribing less than what it is you deserve. So the point here says it sucks, 
because my heart wants to give and my heart wants to love and my heart wants to be forgiving. And sometimes, by the way, guys, I don't think there's ever anything wrong with forgiveness, but do remember you can forgive, but it doesn't mean you have to forget. Okay. So just because you can forgive somebody doesn't mean that you owe them anything. You can let go at the same time too. So Leo's your weekend here is a head over heart decision, but at the same time, despite what the heart says, you are noting that you have to do right by you. Okay. Damn. Definitely an intense one, but Leo's, I think it's a good reading and I think you have the right kind of stance. You know, my heart can be so forgiving and loving, but sometimes I got to remind myself just because my heart may say things, it's not always correct. A lot of people always say, think with your heart or lead with your heart. Sure. In certain circumstances, it's wonderful, but in other circumstances, you got to start using your mind, man, because your heart can be deceiving as well. But when you really start to think and you allow yourself to make those head over heart decisions, they may hurt, but you're going to do right by you instead, rather than letting your heart put you into another position that can possibly get you hurt. Okay, Leos, I love you, and I hope you will continue to be well moving forward. Take it if it resonates and leave it if it doesn't. So, guys, we have done the fire, the air, and the water. Uh, we're getting on into earth signs here next. And might I just add, guys, please don't shoot the messenger, but holy crap, have today's readings been fucking deep, dude. So, we are having some deep, intense-ass readings. I'm sorry about that, y'all. They're not super lighthearted today, but sometimes that happens. So, you know, go with the flow. I hope you guys are doing well, though, uh, collectively at least, okay? Happy Good Friday to you, too. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, everybody. Earth signs are up. We did Capricorn previously. Uh, let's check out Virgo. What's going on here for you, bibs? What's happening here for Team Virgo? Sun, Moon, Rise, and Venus. Coming on in to the next 72 hours. What information and insight do we got rolling on in here for Team Virgo, please? Moving on into the weekend. We're going to get about one last and final shuffle, and we'll see what's going on with you. Hopefully, we're looking at some awesome stuff. Coming up in your weekend, Virgo, overall energy is going to be the Page of Swords. You might be connecting here possibly with an air sign like a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Coming into the current energy, King of Wands in the upright, what you're dealing with, Virgo. Star in reverse and looking at the outcome, the Wheel of Fortune in the upright position. So what is happening here for you? The star definitely has a story to say, but let's talk about the Page of Swords here real quick to the King of Wands. Page of Swords is typically my card of hesitancy, like you're hesitant, like you want to go for something, but you're not. It could be the card that like a lot of tarot readers refer to as like the stalker card, but I don't think you're keeping an eye on something. I think it's more about you want something, but you're not going for it. And the reason I say that too is like you have a King of Wands here. As you can see, the King of Wands is very fixated on a staff and the staff in the tarot can represent creation. So this King is very focused on what he wants, but what he wants isn't created yet. So I feel like you are not going for something that you want to go for. Maybe you want to start something like a business, but you haven't gone for it. Maybe you want to start a relationship, but you don't want to ask the person out. So I feel like there is a situation you want, but you haven't gone for it yet. Now, looking at what you're dealing with, star reverse, the star reverse can be a very doubtful energy when it's in the reverse position. When the star shows up reversed, it could represent, I don't think these things will align. I don't think this will happen. So it's very doubtful kind of energies. And with the outcome showing up being the wheel of fortune, wheel of fortune is like, all right, well, I mean, I want to do something, but I doubt it's going to work. So it's like, I might as well move on. That's what I'm feeling showing up into your weekend, Virgo. That's where I feel like your energy's at. It's like, you know, I want this business, but I doubt it'll be successful, so I'm not going to start the business. I'm just going to move on and forget the dream, you know? I love I love Robert, but at the end of the day, I don't think Robert likes me, so I'm not going to go for it. And I'm here to tell you, go for it anyways, dude. Even if it don't fucking work, it is so much better, guys, shooting your shot, because sometimes... You don't miss and it goes in, okay? You will always, though, miss 100% of the shots you don't take, okay? So at the end of the day, sometimes you can shoot and get it right in the bucket. Other times you might not. But the point is, is at least you took the shot. Because if you want a guaranteed way to never make it into the basket, is if you don't shoot it. Period. If I never decided... Yeah, fuck it. I like tarot. I want to make a channel. If I decided to be hesitant this whole time, I wouldn't be here right now. I shot my shot. 
So Virgos, for any of you guys who are watching, I know it could suck, by the way, when things don't work out. Like when you go for things and it doesn't work out, it sucks, but at least you tried. And having that kind of mentality is what'll make you a successful person. Because at the end of the day, even if you fail, if you keep on trying again, and if you keep on trying and trying and trying, something is bound to work out. You're bound to make the freaking hoop. Okay? So for any of you guys that are watching, moving into your weekend, man, take that hesitant energy, cast it to the side, stop, you know, delaying doing what you want, and instead go for what you want, but also empower yourself with belief, dude. You are so much more capable than you're giving yourself credit for. Take a trip down memory lane this weekend. Look at some of the things in life you've accomplished. I'm sure you've accomplished a fuck ton and you're probably not giving yourself credit for it, but at the end of the day, take some fucking time and think about the shit you've accomplished, okay? Go down memory lane. You'll see how fucking capable you are. And if you sit there, Virgo, I swear to fucking God, if you sit there and you go, well, I haven't accomplished anything. Yes, you have. Have you woke up this morning? Have you made breakfast? Have you made your bed? Probably not, because I don't either. But you're fucking here. And that's an accomplishment within itself. Life is not easy. Life is challenging. But you're still out here kicking ass. Okay, Virgo? So with that being said, that's a fucking accomplishment within itself. So take some time. This weekend, go look at the accomplishments you have. Because you're, you're doing great and you've done great. And hopefully in a way that can help motivate you to start putting some damn belief in yourself. We are all the star card. We are all believers at one point or another in something in our lives. We all have the capacity and the ability to believe in something. Why believe in everything else but not you? Start believing in you. Okay, Virgos? I love you. Let's keep it popping, pushing, and moving forward. Thank you guys for tuning in, okay? All right, baby. So we have finished up so far, guys, our second batch of Zodiacs. We're going to get into our last and our final batch here momentarily. Uh, so we'll get to it soon, okay? Tasha said you can't get what you want if you don't pursue it. The only thing that's stopping you is you. Believe, achieve, and succeed. Absolutely. Yeah. I always say that, man. Most of the time, the only thing standing in the way of you is you. Because if you allow other people to stand in the way of you, you're allowing it, right? If you just stop giving a fuck about other people, then you only have you that's in front of you. But here's the thing. Other people being in front of you is not a very intense or tough obstacle. Being in front of yourself is a much more harder obstacle to deal with. And that, that I will say. Standing in the way of yourself, I personally believe, is a much more tougher obstacle than having somebody else stand in the way of you. 100%. MJ said, reflecting back to the time, uh, or reflecting back to this time a year ago, I'm so proud to say I'm in a much better place in space that I fought so hard to be in. Fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. And I'm glad that you're in a better space. I think we're always improving every year, guys. You know, people can have like shit happen in a year that changes their lives and it could be tough and it could be intense. But besides just talking about 3D things, I, I genuinely believe your soul each year grows and elevates and you can perceive that as a good thing or a bad thing, but our soul's constantly growing with every year we age, we are becoming more wise. We are learning more. We are gaining more knowledge and information. So we always have the ability to see a better version of ourselves and see our lives as an improvement, but we also have the ability to see it as a downgrade or to see it as less than what it is. But I always believe we're growing, man. Yeah, we can be our own worst enemy, for sure. I was for many years. Even at times, dude, because I'm not perfect. I'm my worst enemy sometimes, too. You know? I don't think there's anybody ever in this world who could put as much pressure on me as I can put on myself. There is no motherfucking person that can make me fold like my own damn self. Okay? You could put fucking John Cena in The Rock, two shredded people, screaming in my face, and I will feel way less pressure than the pressure that I can inflict within myself, you know? So with that being said, man, we got to stop being our own worst enemies. 100%. <laughs> John Cena and The Rock would be fucking fucking intense though, but I feel like I'd laugh. Like I'm that kind of person where if someone's yelling at me, I crack a smile. I don't mean to be an asshole, but it's so hard because it's not like, I don't know, man. I'm not that person where if somebody's yelling at me, I get choked up. I'm kind of just like, dude, take a chill pill. <laughs> so if John Cena and The Rock are in my face, dude, I might, I don't know. I might laugh. 
I might break a little bit, you know? <laughs> I might break a little bit. Anyways, guys, give me one second. I got to grab my other vape, and then we're going to go ahead and continue. Ugh, bum, bum, bum. Divine timing is always at play, even when our ego tells us otherwise. Oh, yeah, dude. Everything happens for a reason, man. Everything happens for a reason. You know? Oh, shit. I was late for work today. Maybe being late from work saved you from an accident. Oh, shit. My girlfriend decided to dump me. Maybe she would have been the worst person to marry. Oh, shit. I lost my car keys. Maybe you weren't supposed to drive. Sometimes shit seems like it's really shitty and crappy, but it probably prevented you from something so much worse. You know? Ain't that crazy? How, uh, how what we can call like a minor or a slight inconvenience could have saved you from so much pain or saved you from so much worse. So that's why we got to always look at divine timing as something. I believe very, very strongly everything happens for a reason, you know, 100%. Fawn said, uh, pretty much we can put ourselves through some of the worst mental abuse. Yeah, we can. Absolutely, we can. But that's what we got to stop doing, dude. It's 2024. I'm not saying, hey, everybody, we should all be narcissists, but we got to stop putting ourselves down. I think we've gone through enough of that. Everybody, everybody in the world has faced an asshole in their life who's put them down. There's no one in the world who's never been bullied before or had a negative comment against them. It's happened to everybody. But first and foremost, fuck those people. But second of all, when you start taking in all that shit and absorbing it like a sponge and then becoming your own worst version of it and your biggest bully, fuck it. It's not worth it, dude. You have yourself for life. Remember that. You will not have your parents for life. You will not have your friends for life. You will not have your spouse for life. Okay? You only have you from the moment you are born to the, mo to the moment you go. So with that being said, if you are going to be with yourself for the entire eternity of your life, why not treat yourself as best as you can? Why not love yourself to the best of your capacity? Why not be kind to yourself as much as fucking possible? Seriously, dude. From the moment you're born to the moment you cross the rainbow bridge, it is just you, yourself, and you. Okay? Now, I'm not saying be a narcissistic person and only care about yourself. No. But I'm saying you should love yourself like you so, so much and so heavily love others. I bet 99% of the people who are watching this video or who are in this stream right now can say that they are as kind as can be to others. But maybe some of you watching are saying, but it's hard for me to be kind to myself, right? I was there. I was with you. And I'm still there sometimes. I'm a work in progress. Everyone is. But you gotta remember, man, if you can be so fucking loving and kind to others, you can do it to you too. Okay? Just a constant reminder for people. I know some people might be like, Ant, fucking get to the readings. Well, you can wait. Patience is a virtue, okay? But these messages are also just as important, too. They really are. They really fucking are. Tosh said, I'm so grateful that I chose to take my break at this time. Hell yeah, I'm grateful for you watching, dude. Grateful for you watching. That's the thing, man. I tell people, too, on my channel. I'm like, listen, I might be a chatty Kathy sometimes. I get it. I know some people come here and they're like, I just want a reading and I want to go home. I get it. But I got gems everywhere, baby. I got shit to talk about. <laughs> so there's stuff that, that that's definitely meant to be uh, said and heard, too, you know? This is the reading. Yeah, in a way it is. In a way it is. Anyhow, guys, a couple more moments. We're getting back to it. If you guys have anything else to add, feel free to. <laughs> Danita C said I'd cower. I think I assume you're talking about like the rock and John Cena. <laughs> That'd be funny though. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's the thing. Like I remember being a kid, right? This is just for some like fun random shit I'm talking about. But I remember being a kid, right? And when I was a bad kid, because I was I was a little shit growing up. I remember when my uh, my mom used to tell me she's like, yeah, you know, we're gonna we're gonna put you in military school. We're gonna send you to military school. <laughs> And I don't know what it is, man. And this is why I can never be in the military. Just having a fucking sergeant just screaming in my face. I can't do it, guys. I couldn't do it. 
I couldn't do it. And it's not to be mean. I'm not trying to be a bad person. But if you're just fucking yelling at me, dude, I'm cracking a smile. I can't do it. I just can't. Could you just fucking imagine like just being yelled at by some sergeant dude with that goofy hat? Like, I can't do it. I can't do it. God bless the military and the people who are in there, but I can't do it. My mom's like, we're going to send you there. I was like, they're going to take me back. <laughs> they're going to take me right home. They're going to drop me off. <laughs> so, yeah, man, just a little bit of comedy to break the tension. But yeah, dude, this shit was so funny. You missed me? Oh, well, you're over here. You're here now, little Iris. What's up? Uh, Fawn said, also, if you want uh, to watch the reading after the live stream, you can skip it with the timestamps. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, guys, if you never want to stick around for the read, but you want to watch, um, what's it called? If you guys just want to watch your reading straight up, just watch the live stream afterwards when it's posted as a video. I'll have timestamps up and all that good stuff. But yeah, fucking crazy. Reminds me of Major Pain. <laughs> Y'all ever see that movie? Is that what it's called? Major Pain? That's an old ass movie, bro. So funny. Would not be good these days uh, with, you know, how people are now. But back in the day, that was a funny fucking movie when I was growing up as a kid. I remember watching Major Pain. <laughs> oh, shit. The times have changed. A dishonorable discharge. <laughs> yeah, I probably would be, man. I probably would be. Not even because, like, I'm not tough. Like, I think I could get through it, possibly. I don't know. The military beats you to shit for sure. The, the, the craziest military branch is the fucking Navy. Okay, I have a buddy who's in the Navy. They are fucking gnarly. You don't fuck with the Navy. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, man. The trainings they do, intense. Wouldn't last a fucking day. I know that for sure. So, you know, God bless the people who do it. What up, High Soul? How are you doing today? Thanks so much for stopping by, brother. How are you? Hopefully you're doing good. All right, though, guys, I'm going to get back to it now. Uh, we're going to go to water and uh, Pisces is up. So Team Fish, we're going to see what's popping in for you. OK, so let's go ahead and get it. It is major pain. Yeah, I remember that movie. Anyhow, Team Pisces, let's see what's up. What do we got going on here for you, baby? Message is coming in here for Pisces. Sun, moon, rising and Venus. Coming into the next 20, or sorry, 72 hours. What information and insight do we got rolling on in here for Pisces? Moving on into the weekend. Hopefully, Piscean, we're going to be looking at some awesome sauce. What do we got showing up here for Pisces? In the next 72 hours. Let's go ahead and have ourselves a look. Starting out here with the overall energy for you. What do we have? We have here the Seven of Swords in reverse. You could be connecting here potentially with a air sign like a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Coming into the current energy, Three of Cups in reverse. What you're dealing with, we got a Lovers in reverse. What's going on, Pisces? Looking at the outcome for you. Eight of Swords. A little bit of a concern coming up here this weekend. I feel like you guys think you made a mistake or feel like you made a mistake. Like you feel like you pushed somebody away. So you're kind of disappointed. You're like, did I just push this person away from my actions or from what I said? Or did I do something wrong? I'm feeling that energy where it's like, I feel like I did something because it feels like someone's avoiding me, not wanting to talk to me. But I think you're honestly in your head. I'll pull some cards to clarify for you guys in a moment, but I think you're in your head. I know that feeling also well from just being a water sign. I think water signs all the time think that we did something wrong when somebody has the slightest change in altitude of their attitude. <laughs> you know, the moment their attitude slightly changes, we're like, oh, fuck, what did I do? Right. So, like, I get it as a water sign, but I don't think that you've done anything. So did Pisces actually do something? Let's go ahead and uh, throw it out there now. Did Pisces actually do something to push someone away? Justice, no Piscean. You are in perfect balance. You did not do anything wrong. But one, like I said previously, right, with the outcome here being the Eight of Swords, I think you're in your head a little bit, right? So you're worried. Somebody's energy is different this weekend. And it concerns you on whether or not you had happened to have done something. Because the person you're dealing with here, lovers reversed, maybe they're not so, um, maybe they're not so, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like, warm maybe they're a little cold maybe they're a little detached this weekend but i don't feel like they're specifically cold and detached because of you chances are you're connecting with somebody that's just got something else going on 
And I don't think that they're trying to take it out on you or anybody else. They're probably just not vocal about it. They're not talking about it. So to put Pisceans at ease, if you do feel this way this weekend, I just don't want, I don't think it has anything to do with you. I think it has everything to do with the person you're dealing with. Okay. So word to the wise guys, you didn't do anything wrong. You know, take a breath if you can take some time to just try to get out of your head about it. You know, give your person some space if they need it, but talk to them like, you know, Sunday night or Sunday evening or something, maybe give it a day off. And when you're, you know, when you do, they'll probably be in a completely different energy. So yeah, I don't feel like this is one of those situations where you actually made someone mad at you or put somebody or push somebody away. Excuse me. I think it's one of those things where their attitude probably changed, but it has everything to do with them and not everything to do with you. So I think it's okay. All right, guys. But like I said, as a water sign, I know this feeling all too well. Uh, even sometimes nowadays I'm like, Oh, did I do something wrong? Cause this person's energy is weird. But then I'm like, wait a minute, aunt go back in your actions. Did you do anything wrong? No. So maybe something's going on with them probably and then i give them some space and then i talk to them and then they're like oh yeah x y and z happened and i was like oh that's why they were weird before so like it'll add up in some due time okay so don't be too tough on yourself this weekend i think everything's fine all right pisces try to get out of your head all right let's keep it popping pushing and moving forward thank you guys for tuning on in so all the water signs are finished we're gonna get into our air signs here next uh zephyr said shout out to our vets thank you for your service i was navy dad was army and the uncle was a marine god damn baby your family out here popping you got some badasses in the family but of course shout out to our vets indeed thank you guys for your service really appreciate you guys so much okay absolutely um Fawn said my mom is a Vietnam vet for the army. My stepdad's a Vietnam vet for the Marines. Wow. God damn. My father. Um, so my father's from Portugal and um, in Portugal, you have to do mandatory uh, mandatory service in the Marines or mandatory. Sorry, mandatory service in the army. So he had to do that for two years. Um, so I remember hearing like stories about, you know, what they had to do and what their trainings were like. Um, I do believe I have distant family members from many not many generations ago but from very like a very very long time ago that were uh in the army and marines but i'm not too sure about anybody recently i don't think any recent family members are there i do have a couple family members i have a lot of family members actually in law enforcement to say the least but yeah um but when my dad talked about that i always found it interesting um with his service and what he had to do so yeah it's a very very hard thing to do man so salute the people who do it it's not easy all right, though, guys, we're going to go keep it moving forward. Uh, like I said, we've touched base here with all the water. Coming up next is air. We've done Gemini. We've also done Aquarius. So, Team Libra, thank you guys for your patience, and we'll see what we got going on. What do we got showing up here for Libra, baby? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus coming on in to the next 72 hours. What information and insight do we got rolling on in here for Team Libra? Moving into the next 72. Hopefully, we're looking at some pretty fantastic stuff. Let's see what we got going on. Starting out here with the overall energy for Libra. We have here a King of Wands in reverse. Taking a look here at the current energy, we got here a Justice in reverse. What you're dealing with, guys, Ace of Cups in reverse. Looking at the outcome, Ace of Pentacles in the upright position. Interesting reading. Huh. Let's see what this one is about. You got a king of, king of Wands reverse, and same here with the Justice card. So I almost kind of feel here for you guys. It's been pretty hard for you to feel balanced lately, but I almost feel like in a way you don't want to because looking at what you're dealing with here, Ace of Cups reverse is like, I'm just not fulfilled in a situation, and I don't want to make the situation better because I'm already not happy with it. So I feel like some of you guys are kind of just like letting something phase out on its own. It's like I'm not happy with the way or the state that something is in, but I'm not doing everything I can to make it better because I don't really want to make it better. So you're kind of letting something in your life phase out. Could be a relationship, could be a friendship, could be a job. Maybe some of you are quiet quitting, I think is what that term is, where it's like you're just doing the bare fucking minimum. You know, you're not going extra hard uh, for the job that you have. So I feel like you're in that energy right now where it's like, I don't want to make something better, so I'm not going to try to. And when it phases out of my life, it phases out of my life. And that's just simply that, you know, when a better opportunity comes my way looking at the outcome ace of uh, pentacles when a better opportunity comes my way i'll see what's up 
Here's my thing, though. I do want to note, like, in certain situations, I get this. Like, in certain work situations, right, sometimes we can't get the job of our dreams. Sometimes we just got to do jobs that we got to do. Uh, sometimes we just need an income. So if you're just doing the bare fucking minimum at a job you hate, I get it. Uh, but, you know, still strive to find a better one. One thing I will say, though, is that if you're a Libra and let's say this is about a relationship, walk away. Walk away 100%. Because it's never worth staying with somebody and just having them there because of the comfort, you know? And I'm not saying that you guys are specifically doing this, but if any person or Libra or anybody who's watching who happens to be in this kind of position, you will be far more happier being single, I promise you that, than being in a situation where you're not even interested in making it better. So word to the wise Libras, whether we're talking about trying to phase out of a relationship, a friendship, a job, like in certain circumstances, let it phase out naturally. But if you're in a circumstance right now where you're just not happy with it, you're going to be so much more happier walking away than waiting for that moment where it officially ends and it's all over, especially in relationship settings. Like if you are not happy with a friendship anymore, you don't have to participate in that friendship. Same with that romantic relationship. Same with that job. But I know like sometimes guys, we got to do jobs we hate because we need fucking money. It is what it is, right? So definitely something to keep in mind coming into your weekend, y'all. If you're not happy, forget letting it phase out. Just walk away instead and take that initiative because once you do walk away, you're going to feel so ready and so pumped to get what you actually want and what you actually deserve. All right, Libras, I love you, baby. Let's keep it popping, pushing, and moving forward. Thank you guys for tuning on in, okay? All right, so we have done all of our air. We've done all of our water. Coming up next is going to be Team Fire Signs, guys. Uh, so give me a moment or so, and we'll hop into it. Uh, Fawn, thank you so much for being a member for over the past 29 freaking months. Insane. You said, I think I'm letting all the negative phase out. For sure. For sure. For sure. Uh, you said, I kind of am, man. I'm trying hard to make my marriage work. At the end of the day, too, like that's a tough situation, right? Because you got to uh, the furthest place you can get, right? When it comes towards, uh, you know, when it comes towards a relationship. Getting married is one of the furthest places you can go with a respectable partner, but nothing is perfect. Relationships aren't perfect. Marriages aren't perfect, but you have to remember that if this is a person you love, it takes two people to have to choose to go through the hard times to get to the good times. And you have to ask yourself, Fawn, are you working alone in this journey or do you have a partner who's willing to work with you? You know, if you guys work together, you can make it through anything, dude, but it can't just be you. Okay. Um, Marlene, what's up? Hello, hello. Hey, Aunt Soul Fam, I'm super late, but how, always happy to be here with y'all. I love you guys, and I hope you're doing amazing. Well, thank you, Marlene. I appreciate you. I hope you're having an amazing night, too, and uh, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. What's up, Anna? You said, yes, Aunt. Thanks, and amazing as always. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, by the way, guys, like I mentioned, we're going into Fire Signs next, just taking a small temporary break, and then we'll get into it, okay? Tosh said, I believe in you, Fawn, sending you some of my loving energy when you need it, for sure. Yeah, Fawn, I do believe in you, for sure, and you got this. You said your issues are communication. I think almost everybody faces that, even like non, uh, even like platonic friendships and relationships face communication issues. Communication's hard, because like, there's some people in life that like, they're just your person. You guys can talk about anything and everything, and even if they're not like your romantic person, it's like your best friend, they just get you. Some people really get you on a level where communication is super easy, but even the people we love the most sometimes can be challenging to communicate with them. And it's because everybody's so inherently unique and different. The thing about communication, though, is is that everybody has different kinds of languages and different kinds of ways of understanding things. If you choose to not give up on communication and you choose to keep on working at it, you will find what works for you. But keep in mind, nothing is ever perfect and that's OK. All right. So when it comes to marriages, relationships, anything like that, it's OK if it gets a little messy sometimes or rough around the edges, because those moments are where you come out so much fucking stronger. OK. So much stronger. Anyhow, though, guys, let's get back to it. Uh, we're going to jump into fire. So we did Aries. We did Leo. So Sagittarius, you guys are up. OK, by the way. For the 131 peeps in here, appreciate you guys. If you're enjoying the live, hit the like button. Thank you, everybody, for tuning on in. So let's see what's going on here, everybody. What's going on for Team Sagittarius? Sun, moon, rising and Venus moving on in. To the next 72 hours. What do we got going on here for Team Saggy? Coming on into the weekend. What is popping in here for you? We're going to get our last and final shuffle, Sagittarius, and we'll see what is in store here for you. 
Now, starting out with the overall energy, we got here the Hermit card, so you might be dealing with a Virgo. Looking into your current energy, we have here the Two of Wands, what you're dealing with. We have here the King of Wands in reverse, and looking at the outcome for you, is going to go ahead and be the Nine of Pentacles in reverse as well. Now, I feel first and foremost for Sagittarian peeps, Hermit card here to the Two of Wands. If you have a choice or a decision to make, I think you're kind of like, eh, I don't want to make a choice or a decision. I don't want to be indecisive. So I'm almost kind of choosing the third option, which is do nothing. <laughs> and it's a mood. <laughs> I've been there many times where I'm like, okay, I'm indecisive right now. So I kind of just don't want to do anything. Sometimes I'm that way too. Uh, having a look at what you're dealing with, King of Wands reversed, having a lack of interest right now in some sort of situation where you're unsure and uh, looking at the outcome nine of pentacles reversed i think what it all boils down to sagittarius is like you don't want to make a choice or a decision because you're not sure if you're going to make the right one here's what i'm here to tell you whatever you choose is not going to be the wrong choice because whatever choice you choose was the part of your path you were supposed to go on whether it may be a positive experience or a challenging i won't say negative i will say a challenging experience where you go is where you go and I'm a firm believer that we always are exactly where we need to be in our journey throughout our lives. So right now you're kind of like, I don't know, I'm just not confident in making a choice. You know, maybe some of you guys aren't confident in choosing a job. Maybe you have two, uh, two different offers. Maybe you have two different offers on a home and you're not sure which one to pick or you have two different offers in people to be with, who knows? But I always tell people, if you can't choose one over the other, choose neither. And especially in love, if you can't choose between Brayden and fucking Andrew, at the end of the day, you don't want either of them because the number one choice will always stick out amongst the rest. And that goes as a, I feel like that applies to everything, you know, like what you really want will stand out above everything. So sometimes it is good to take that third option and do nothing because what's meant for you will find you and what's meant for you, you'll know 110%. Like I remember when I was apartment hunting every apartment I saw, I was like trying to settle for something there, even though it wasn't great. And then every time I would try to settle, the universe was like, no, <laughs> you can't do that. The universe was like, this isn't what you want. You have this option, that option, this option, that option. You don't want any of them. That's why I was so confused on what to pick. Cause I, I, I went on so many different tours trying to find the right place. Then an apartment opens up in the building where my, uh, my partner's parents live. And I was like, wow, I've always loved their building. That's kind of perfect. They know the owners and then everything aligned to a T so perfectly because I made sure that I was going to let what I was meant for find me, right? I had all these rundown shitty apartments. I remember one guy was trying to rent out a basement and their bathtub was rusted and they were like, yeah, we'll just paint over it. And I'm talking like dirty rust. Okay. And I remember it was super small and they wanted, I believe it was $2,200 a month for it because New York, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I remember sitting there going, should I just take it to take it? Fuck no, I'm glad I didn't settle. And that's the point, man. When you're stuck between choices and decisions, if nothing sticks out to you, it's not for you. But when you give it some time, what's meant for you will find you. So Sagittarius, I think in this situation, if you don't know what to do right now, or if you're kind of stumped this, week, uh, this weekend and choosing something, give yourself the time right now to Take a step back and let what's meant for you find you. I think that's going to serve you so much better than just choosing something to choose it. Because if you really wanted something, it would stick out like a sore thumb. All right? All right, Sagittarian, I love you. If it resonates, cool. If not, no worries. But we're going to keep it popping, pushing and moving forward. So thank you for tuning on in. All right, baby? All right, everybody. So we have done all of our water, all of our air, and all of our fire. We're going to get on into our last but not least zodiac sign shortly, which is going to be Team Taurus. So Taurus, stay tuned. Um... As a Sag rising, I feel that uh, you've been contemplating picking up a second job, but I'm not sure how that'll hinder the, how that will hinder your schedule. Understandable. A lot of people nowadays, though, I feel like a second job is becoming the norm, unfortunately, in America at least, right? But that's due to the nature of inflation and just how fucking intense of times we are in right now financially. Um, you know, when I was I was eight years old back in 2008. So in 2008, those were tough times for Americans, and um, at the end of the day. Witnessing that and then witnessing the kinds of inflation we have today, it's like, whoa, it's a little similar, right? So it's a definitely a tough time, but at the end of the day, it has been pretty interesting over the past couple of years how it does seem, right? Like uh, 
second jobs is becoming the new norms, you know? Definitely does. Uh, Zephyr asked, Rebel Deck for a final collective message? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Greedflation, you mean? Yeah, it is greedflation, right? Corporate companies making billions and they're like, yeah, we'll pay the, we'll pay our employers, uh, you know, 15 an hour and maybe they'll make, you know, uh, less than 30 grand a year, but they need to make technically 150 to survive. Yeah, I know it. That's, that, that's what it is. It's greedflation. <laughs> but a lot of people, man, they're, they'll always combat that. They're like, well, you know, if you live in a state that pays more, you know, that's nice, right? But it's like everything balances out. You can make 725 in one state, but the cost of living is super cheap, but it levels out. Same thing where you can make $30 an hour in one state, but the cost of living levels out. So yeah, the government set up a way where unless you really thrive in a career setting or you thrive with your own kinds of businesses, if you are just a person doing what you can do at this time, the government has set it up in a way where inflation or not financially you're just in a spiral so something's gonna change hopefully it does for sure hopefully it does for sure but yes i will do um let me see if i have it here the rebel tarot deck for a final collective message i think i have it in one of my drawers over here if not it's back there on the bookshelf but let me double check let me see if I can grab that real fast and then we'll do Taurus and then we'll do a rebel uh, collective. One second, guys. One sec, y'all. There you go. Ugh. By the way, for anybody who wants to pick up this deck, because a lot of people ask me all the time, oh, did my second camera freeze? Damn it, it did. <laughs> all right, we got no second camera now. It froze. Uh, either way, though, Mercury Retrograde, right? Anybody who wants to get this deck, um, I mentioned it previously. I bought this on Amazon. This is what it looks like. Rebel deck, tarot with attitude, zero filter, zero fucks equals all fun. So if you guys want to check it out, feel free to. Um, but yeah, super fun deck if you want to work with it. Uh, very happy money said I did nine months in an overpriced dive. It sucked. I gave up before the year was up. Hashtag self love. Yeah, dude. It's 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 definitely um interesting times right now around the world. But anyhow, let's get to it. Uh, we're gonna jump into Taurus, and then I will give you guys a collective message with the Rebel Tarot. Okay. Uh, just no second camera, unfortunately, because it decided to freeze up on me. God dang it. All right, guys. Taurus, what's up? Thank you for your patience, baby. And let's see what's popping on in here for you. Okay. What do we got going on here for Team Taurus? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus moving on in to this, or sorry, to the next 72 hours. What do we got showing up here, please? For the zodiac sign of Taurus. Moving on in to the next 72. What do we got going on here for you, baby? We're going to get here, Taurus, this last and final shuffle. And we shall see what is up. Starting out here with the overall energy for you is going to be the chariot. Taurus, you could be connecting here with the Cancer, possibly. Uh, taking a look here into the current energy, we have here a Ace of Swords in reverse. What you're dealing with right now, Three of Swords, and looking at the outcome, Taurus is going to be the Emperor in the reverse position. Interesting. Hmm. First and foremost, you might be dealing with a Cancer. You also could be connecting with an Aries with that Emperor card showing up as well. I almost want to kind of say, Taurus, Chariot card here, Ace of Swords reversed here. I feel like this is you moving in a direction that you don't feel is the direction you actually want to be moving in. So I feel like you are acknowledging that you're on a path you don't want to be a part of. And you're kind of trying to separate yourself from it this weekend, but a part of you feels like you have no control. It's like, I'm on this path. I don't want to be here, but like, I don't feel like I can change it. And I think that right there is what's absolutely certainly keeping you trapped. Remember guys, belief is really the driving and power force that's going to get you from point A to point B. I always say in terms of what, what creates a manifestation is a two part recipe. It's the law of attraction and the law of action. The law of attraction is the belief in the ability to attract what it is you desire. The law of action is taking action to start putting that manifestation in motion but when you combine the two you manifest things so if you can believe in yourself and take action you can manifest your desire okay the issue though is that by not being able to believe that your circumstances are aren't in your power by basically saying your circumstances are beyond your power you're believing that no matter what i do i can't get off a path i'm not happy with and by being in that space of disbelief 
It's basically causing you to empower the belief that you're not going to escape and that you're trapped. And remember, what it is we believe is what it is we perceive. So if we're believing we're stuck and trapped, we're going to be stuck and trapped. If we're believing we're not going to improve our circumstances, those circumstances, best believe, are going to stay the same. So you have to start unfucking yourself, okay? You have to start, Taurus, saying, this belief and story I've told myself that my circumstances are never going to change, that story's got to go bye-bye. It's got to go pop and push and moving forward. And we need to start rewriting a new story. A story in which empowers the belief that you have, in fact, changed your circumstances. A story that empowers you to the point where you fucking believe it instantaneously. And how do you force yourself or make yourself believe something you don't? You reinforce that belief until it becomes second nature to you. And what I mean by that is, is every single day, you are going to constantly catch yourself slipping. You are going to be in a consistent state of awareness, and you're going to keep on working on it over and over and over again until once again, that belief becomes second nature. So for example, let's say the thought crosses your mind. I'm trapped here forever. It sucks. These circumstances suck. You're going to be aware that you said that, and you're going to rephrase that sentence. You know what? My circumstances might suck right now, but I'm avidly working to get out of them. And I truly believe I'm going to better myself, my experience and my circumstances. And I'm going to be in the best place in my life I ever can be. And every time you catch yourself negatively thinking, what you're going to do is get a positive thought about what you're choosing to believe in now. And you're going to reinforce it over and over and over and over again. And as tedious as that shit is, it works because positive reinforcement is exactly the key that you need here to really start to jumpstart a brand new belief. It's what you need to remove that old limited shitty belief and start to enforce a new belief that's going to benefit your timeline. Because if your belief is your perception and if your perception is your reality, then we need to start perceiving differently about ourselves. And what empowers that is belief. Okay? So give it a check out, guys. Try positive reinforcement. It's what massively changed my life. I tell my story a lot on this channel. I'm not going to give you guys a lengthy version, but I went from being a very negative and unhappy person to practicing positive reinforcement every day and training myself to be a positive person. Every time I would think negative, I caught that negativity and I changed it into something more positive and empowering. So the more that I did that, the more I reinforced it, the more it became second nature, the more I became a positive person when I used to be, by default setting, a very negative motherfucker, a very unhappy motherfucker. All right? So Taurus, get positive reinforcement going. It's not an easy journey, but you can do it. And right now, whatever you're telling yourself won't change. It most certainly can. But you got to start believing in you, boo. Let's keep it popping, pushing, and moving forward. Shout out to my bull gang. I love you guys, okay? All right, everybody. As I previously mentioned, Zephyr was asking about a collective message here with the Rebel Tarot deck. So we're going to go ahead and see what's up here with the collective and see what the Rebel messages have to say. I do have to fair warn you, the Rebel Tarot deck can be a little feisty sometimes. So some of y'all might hear some vulgar shit, <laughs> but we'll see what's up. We'll see what the Rebel Tarot has to say. So let's tap into a collective message here. What does the collective need to hear, please? What Rebel messages need to come out for the collective? Uh, guys, some of these messages may make no sense. If they apply to you, roll with it, okay? But let's see what's up. What does the Rebel Tarot have to say to the collective? Let's take a look, man. First one coming out. Collective! I love it, dude. Some good shit is about to happen. Don't let your issues fuck it up. Period. Some good shit is about to happen. Don't let your issues fuck it up. AKA, collective, don't stand in your own way. Some good shit's about to happen. Don't let the, oh, well, nothing good ever happens to me. Don't let stupid shit like that stand in the way. Okay? Some good shit's about to happen. Don't be the person who stands in your own way. Nothing good ever happens to me. Cut it out. Kick that shit to the curb. Moving forward. What's the next message here for the collective? We're going to get a couple. What's the next message here that the collective needs to hear? What rebel message does the collective need to hear, please? Boom. Stop texting, stop stalking, stop checking in on that person. Just fucking stop. Spending your time, or excuse me, spend your time on someone worth it. Do not waste it on ridiculousness. Mic drop. I love it. It's true. 
Stop obsessing over stupid. Mr. or Mrs. Stupid. Okay? Don't spend time on somebody who isn't spending time on you. So for anyone who needs that message, let that shit go. Focus on spending time on the people who give a fuck. Because those are the people who matter. Period. Moving forward. What other collective messages do we have here from the Rebel Tarot deck, please? What other messages do we have here for the collective from the Rebel Tarot deck? 111 viewers in the chat. 111. That's what's up. Let's take a look here. It says, love, give some, and get some. It will cheer your ass up. Some of y'all need to tap into the energy of love. Okay? <laughs> Not only will it cheer you up, but it will cheer up others. Love is the highest vibration in this 3D reality. So guys, remember, get out of the energy of hatred. Get into the energy of love. Get out of the energy of negativity. Start loving yourself. Start loving your neighbor. Because love is so high vibrational and love is so infectious, okay? The more you can love you, the more you will begin to then therefore love others. The more you love others, it spreads, okay? It spreads in a good way, all right? Not the bad way, okay? So with that being said, man, bring some love back on into your life, guys. If you feel like love's been deprived, it's time for you to start bringing it back in. It's a beautiful vibration. It's a beautiful energy. All right, guys, we're going to get two more, two more Rebel Tarot messages for the collective, and then I'm going to sign off, okay? What are, let's get the last two here. What are going to be the last two Rebel messages here for the collective, please? Last two messages. Get some fucking sleep. Oh, this one's for me. It says, you're being an ass because you're fucking tired. Put your face to the pillow now. <laughs> so some of you guys that are watching, if you need to sleep right now, once we finish this daily, go get some fucking sleep. <laughs> I love that card, man. It comes out for me every time because truth be told, I'm always sleep deprived. So that's probably my guides yelling at me. But anyhow, guys, like I promised, one more card coming out for you. Last rebel message for the collective. What do we have? What do we got to tell the collective today? It says, shame, regret, and guilt. Those are just bullshit. Forgive and let that shit go. Stop holding on to all the emotional residue. I preach that a lot on my channel. And when I say emotional residue, it's pretty much the shame, the regret, the guilt, all of those feelings that are left over from when situations were supposed to be ended. At the end of the day, when we're holding on to all of that shit, that emotional residue, it adds up, it gets dirty. And then when that residue gets everywhere, you're in a point in time where you're not feeling good, you're feeling icky, right? So at the end of the day, if we wanna be able to fully detach from a situation, not only do we have to let go of the situation, but we have to become present to the fact that we're no longer in the situation. We gotta stop bringing the past into our present. Emotional residue is keeping the past in the present. So remember guys, let that shit go fully to its completion, okay? Be present to where you are now, all right? All right, baby. Uh, Tosh said four hours of sleep is not enough. I agree. I had three last night. <laughs> I had three. So I'm aiming for a good six and seven. I need six to seven hours of sleep tonight. My body is like, bitch, you fucking need it. I know. So I will make sure I get some good sleep tonight anyhow. All right. All right, guys. Those are your rebel messages for the collective. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Tarot with Attitude. It's a fun time. It's a good time. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it here nonetheless, okay? And uh, we're almost at, we're at an hour and 23 today for the fucking weekend read. Holy shit, we've been live for a long time. I thought we'd been live for like maybe... 50 minutes no it's been an hour and 23 fucking minutes god damn anyhow with that all being said guys thank you all so much for coming out here to the weekend read much love and appreciation to every single one of you i want to thank you guys so much for your time here today you are much loved and you are much much appreciated okay if you enjoy this video as always hit that fucking like button man smash it I would appreciate you so much. It will help me out so much on YouTube. So if you want to support me in any kind of way, hitting the like button. If you're new, hitting the subscribe button. I would love to have you and welcome you into the soul family. So if you're a new person here, subscribe. I'd be happy to have you, baby. Okay. couple of things to note. Um, I know everybody's like, Ant, those March readings, it's almost March is almost over. Why the fuck are you doing them? I'm doing them just to get them done at the end of the day, right? Because I started them, so I'm going to finish them. So March readings are almost done. If you've noticed now, it's March into early April. So the energies we're covering is the end of March, the remainder into early April. Uh, all those signs are coming up soon. So we only got four more left to post. So they will be posted sh uh, soon, guys. So stay tuned, okay? Everybody's going to get an individual April reading soon as well. So that's going to be starting uh, next week. All right, so that'll be getting done soon. 
Um, as always, guys, if you want personal reads, they're available. You can go ahead and get a personal reading for me today if you'd like. Uh, head over to cancermoonstarot.com, and I'll be happy to have you. I'll be happy to work with you. So if you want to book me, definitely feel free to, okay? All right, though, guys, have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Happy Good Friday to everybody. Um, I hope you had a great day today. Thank you all so much for your love and support. And I'm wishing you all a happy, a healthy, and a wonderful weekend. I'm wishing you all a happy Easter, too. I hope you have a good time. Spend some time with your family. Uh, somebody asked me my plans earlier. Uh, I plan to spend time with my family for Easter. Uh, go hang out with my mom sister my brother-in-law and stuff kick it have a good time uh so those are my easter plans so enjoy it with your friends your family your loved ones everybody um and have a wonderful weekend okay super excited and stoked to catch you guys in the next video so with that being said guys thank you very much take care have a wonderful night and i will see you all later much love and have yourselves a good one peace 